Makers, Sean Avery here with the next lesson in the Children's Book Council Make Your Own Storybook Competition. Now, this is the lesson that teaches you how to write a conflict for your picture book. Now, if you're writing a picture book, awesome, keep on watching, but if you are doing a storybook, links in the description down below for, the, for writing a storybook uh, conflict because it is a little bit different. Remember, picture books are all about using words and pictures combined together to tell the story and uh, storybooks are all about uh, using more descriptive language to get the story across. So, the conflict, that is at the very top of Story Mountain. So, just to refresh your memory, you begin uh, at the bottom here where you do your introduction and then you do your build up and your conflict, that's the kind of the peak of your story. And then from there you sort of go downhill and wrap it up with your resolution and your ending. Now. Conflict in your story, it often uh, doesn't get resolved straight away. So I'll show you what I mean by that. We uh, begin at the bottom of Story Mountain over here with our introduction. So I for introduction, yeah? Going all the way up, we have our build up, which kind of leads into our, uh, our, our problem or our conflict, which is uh, sort of where we're up to at this point. Now the conflict is at the top and that's when something goes wrong, but most stories don't just have one single conflict, they have numerous ones. So usually what happens is you get to the top, you have your first problem, and then your character tries to solve that problem, so you feel like uh, they're going down the mountain to a resolution, but often it doesn't work out for them and they get themselves into even bigger trouble. And so the conflict goes up like that and then they try to solve it again and even more trouble for them. And then finally, they manage to solve their problem down the bottom here with uh, the resolution, the final resolution, and of course your ending. So it kind of, instead of your mountain being a, a simple peak like that, it looks kind of more like this. So you've got conflict one, conflict two, conflict three, and then you've just got partial, uh, partial resolution. So PR, PR. So. It's really, it's really up to you how, um, how complex you want your story to be. Um, w when you have sort of partial like conflicts and then partial resolutions, you give the opportunity for your, to uh, demonstrate your, your character's development. So, um, you know, they try something, it doesn't work, and they learn from that and they grow, and then, um, you know, they try new things. So, uh, it, it's, it sort of makes your story a little bit more sophisticated if you've got kind of different levels of conflict within your story. If you're not so confident and you just want to keep it simple, have the one conflict and then uh, your character solve the problem straight away, feel free to do that. But uh, the way I'm doing it is I'm going to sort of have a, have a couple of conflicts in my story. So I'm not going to have three. I'm just going to have, uh, I'm just going to have two. Uh, like this, so I'll have uh, my con my first conflict, my partial resolution, and then my second conflict, and then my final resolution going like that. So this is the section I'm going to work on today: a conflict and a partial resolution. Now, uh, an example of how that works in uh, in a in a picture in a picture book. Uh, this is stuck by Oliver Jeffers. Now, this story is all about a problem. It's a little boy who gets his kite stuck in a tree. And uh, the problem kicks off straight away. And he comes up with his solution. He throws his uh, shoe into the tree to begin with, and then it gets stuck. And so he throws his other shoe into the tree, and of course that gets stuck as well. So you think it, it kind of goes up and down like this all the way up. And as you can imagine, uh, more and more things keep getting stuck as he throws them into the tree, and his problems kind of get bigger and bigger as he uh, you know throws things like gorillas and bicycles and front doors into uh, into the tree trying to knock the cat the kite down so lots and lots of problems in this story um, my story that I'm writing about Charlesworth Oinkington a warthog that doesn't want to uh, play in the mud with his family and friends his uh, first problem the first part of his conflict that I'm gonna write about is when uh, you know, he's been telling his family and friends, no, I don't want to play in the mud. And he's kind of getting a bit annoyed. He's sick of being asked. But then all of a sudden, the first conflict when uh, the one of the hogs jumps into the, into the mud and sort of sends a big tidal wave of mud splashing down over the top of him. 
Um, that's the first part of the conflict that I'm going to write now. And uh, I'm going to write my second part of the, the conflict in another lesson, in the next lesson. So I'm going to go over to my desk now and I'm going to write the first part, the first part of my conflict for my story. All right, I am ready to start writing the first part of my conflict. Now, as usual, guys, these templates will be in the description down below for you to download and use yourself. Before I start on writing my conflict though, I wanna have a quick look to make sure that I'm on the right track, that I'm following my story along. So I've got my uh, introduction of my character, drawing my pictures at the same time. Remember, really rough pictures down the bottom here, introducing my setting here, and my build up, and uh, the last part of my build up, we sort of ended where this uh, war dog is jumping into the mud and is about to send a massive tidal wave of mud over Charlie. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, you can see I was sort of ended it on page number nine, which means that I've got a label. I'll put this to the side, I don't need that at the moment. Need to label my pages 10, 11, 12, and 13. Now, I'm going to do a few things just as usual. I've got a, a checklist down the side here. Number one, I'm going to introduce my first problem. My, the second part is I'm going to introduce a partial resolution. As always, I'm going to show, don't tell. Uh, I'm going to let my pictures talk. Um, I'm going to make sure I write with my senses. What can we see? What do we feel? What do we hear? All right, so Charlie's about to get soaked. So. What I'm thinking now, because I've been using so many words uh, up until this point, um, I'm gonna have a page with very, very few words. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna have a tidal wave of mud, so sort of splashing up like that, you know, like a big uh, slimy mud puddle. Just gonna shade that in so I know I want that to be quite dark. Obviously it's mud, it's dark brown. And then I've got Charlie looking very small, small over here. I know what he looks like now. I know that he stands on his um, two hind feet. So I'm gonna have him here. He's got big eyes and he's looking up, tiny little pupils. And he, um, I don't know, maybe he's saying like, oh dear, something like, oh dear. So page number 10, just, oh dear, from Charlie. I might put that in a speech bubble. Or something like that. Super simple, guys. Uh, and uh, so that's 10 and 11. So that goes over two pages. All right. I'm going to keep on going with 12 and 13. If I need uh, any more... Uh, any more little squares to to do more pages I'm gonna do it on the back of the sheet over here okay and I finished doing my drawings or my very very quick sketches for the first part of my conflict now you can see that I have used quite a few more pages uh, for this part of the story obviously this is the most exciting part I want to really sort of extend it out because this is where the action really takes place and um, you can see I obviously ran out of space yeah just drew on the back no problem it is a very rough first draft so let's see what I've got oh dear Charlie said oh, I just said oh dear and then you can see in the pictures here the mud is just about a splash down on Charlie and he is looking very very small page 12 the other warthog knew he was in trouble. He tried to say sorry. Charlie, I'm so sorry. Here, let, let me help. But Charlie wasn't having it. It's not Charlie, it's Charlesworth. And I don't want help from a muddy hog. And uh, you can see here, guys, that uh, I've uh, used... It's nice to use a whole double spread every now and again to make... Uh, you know, to sort of give the reader a break. You know, there's only two words on this page. Um, and on this one, we've got a bit of a contrast here. So we've got, a, you know, two opposites. We've got a kind of, Charlie's obviously very upset. He's, he's buried and covered in mud. And then on the next page, he's sort of exploding outwards. So this is quite a still page. This page has got lots of movement. Mud's flying all over the place as he's, um, as he's yelling. Um, and then it says, and with that, Charlie stomped off into the bush felt. 
So you can see I've used another double page spread here and uh, I've drawn the hogs over here looking a bit sad and Charlie looking really angry, stomping off in another direction. And this page sort of symbolizes how he's separating himself from his friends and family. Um, okay, so now I'm on page 16 here. Charlesworth Oinkington was determined to find new clean associates, but believe it or not, the African bushveld was not exactly teeming with creatures who took their personal hygiene as seriously as he did. And he's saying over here, gross. And that's uh, meant to be a, uh, I think like a hyena or a lion or something busy chewing on a bone, which he finds disgusting. I've decided maybe I might even add in some uh, speech bubbles because they see, I think they'll, they'll work uh, with the story. Uh, speech bubbles might not work on your story though. We want to avoid making it a comic, but, uh, I think in this case, it might be just for one or two words. It might be good. Um, and then he says, foul over here. And you can see this elephant. He's sneezing a big snotty puddle onto the ground just at his feet and he's jumping into the air. And then he says, I never thought I'd say this, but I do hope that's mud they're throwing. And there's a bunch of monkeys and they're going to be throwing their poop at each other. So that's going to be pretty disgusting. So you can see here, guys, I've got a little bit of Variation Again, variation is so important in your drawing. So I've got a medium shot of Charlie behind the bush over there. I've got a far away one of him. And then I've got an extreme close up over here where you can sort of just see his eyes poking up above the page and the monkeys are in the background. And that variation will make it look, um, yeah, more interesting. Uh, he'd almost given up when he spotted them. The flamingos. Now there's a group of sophisticated creatures, Charlie thought. He ran over to the flock and stuck out his trotter to introduce himself. Cheerio, chaps. Charlesworth Oinkington, at your service. So I'm thinking over here, this flamingos might look uh, really kind of amazing, maybe like a bright starburst or halo effect on them. And then they're sort of silhouetted and we can see the back of Charlie's head over here. And then in the next shot, you've got a very confused looking flamingo and Charlie going to shake their hands so let's have a look let's see if i've got all the parts of the uh of the first part of my problem of my conflict so have i introduced the problem yep charlie's had enough of his family he's been covered he's just been covered in mud and uh he's done with it he's absolutely sick of it partial resolution yes we've uh sent charlie off into the bush felt and he's found the flamingos who are much more sophisticated than the other hogs so we've got our partial solution we know uh, that obviously it's not going to be the end of the, the final solution because uh, the flamingos aren't very nice uh, creatures, but we'll get to that later. Show, don't tell. Well, there's plenty of show, don't tell in here in, uh, in the fact that I, you know, I've got the hyena chewing on the bone and the elephant sneezing and the monkeys throwing poop, but I'm not actually describing these things. I'm just going to let the pictures do the talking and then Charlie's sort of reacting to those with his little speech bubbles. So yeah, I've definitely done plenty of show, don't tell. Uh, what can we see? Well, plenty of action is happening. Charlie's stomping away. You can see he's going to be really cross over here and the, the hogs are going to be looking sad over here. Um, again, and that sort of links into our feelings as well. We know the, the hogs are sad to see him go. And we know that Charlie is just absolutely, he's had enough, he's furious. And uh, what can we hear? Well, there's plenty of dialogue. You know, he's talking about things being gross and disgusting. And over here, you can see he's uh, yelling at the, at the other hogs. He's really losing his temper. So we've definitely written with our senses. So there you go, guys. The first part of our conflict completed. And this is always my favorite part of the story where things start to get a little bit exciting. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely think it's, it's a lot of fun to write. So... This is, uh, this is what you need to do uh, to the, do at least the first part of your problem. And remember, if you uh, just want to do one part of your problem and then just go straight into the main uh, resolu like the, the resolution that sort of ends your story, that's absolutely fine. But if you want your story to have a little bit more depth, make it a little bit more interesting, show your character taking a journey to try and solve their, their problem and failing and trying again, then this is the way to go to write your conflict in two parts. So the next lesson will be me writing the second part of my conflict, carrying on from when Charlesworth Oinkington meets, meets the flamingos. And uh, yeah, homework, make sure you're reading plenty guys, illustrators, make sure that you're drawing every single day and make sure that you've got the first part of your problem done. And I will see you all next time. Happy reading, happy creating.